Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is July 12, 2022. Let's talk unbeaten welterweight champion, Errol Spence, against unbeaten welterweight champion, Terrence Crawford. <coughs> Many of you have both men on your top five pound-for-pound pound boxing lists. Let's talk about who I think wins, and let's talk about why. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, a generation ago, maybe more than that, we had one of the dominant lightweight champions in history, a guy named Roberto Duran. And Roberto Duran faced an unbeaten Ray Leonard. And Duran came inside. Right? Took Ray's unbeaten status. Was bullying Ray most of the fight. Kept Ray inside. Went to Ray's body. Ray didn't know how to handle a guy who could cut off the ring on him and go to his body. Right? And Duran, of course, knew all the dirty tricks in the game. Right? He'd hold a hand, he'd come in, those elbows were sharp, and stuff like that. Well, years later, after Duran had some adversity in the ring, <coughs> look up the Duran-Kirkland Lang fight. <coughs> after Duran had lost the Ray Leonard rematch. After Duran goes 15 rounds with Marvin Hagler, survives 15 rounds, but doesn't get the decision. After Duran gets stopped by Thomas the Hitman Hearns. That's a fight you need to look at. Duran fights an underrated Iran Barkley. And in that fight, rather than come inside, Roberto Duran fights from the outside. That tape is on YouTube. It's a must-watch. The consummate inside fighter is actually on the outside doing work. He takes Barkley's title. Terence Crawford, like Duran versus most of his peers, can change direction. Right? In my opinion, he is going to win this fight. Possibly by stoppage. Because the punch that hurts you is the one you don't see coming. Right? Don't get me wrong. Maybe in the abstract, Errol Spence hits harder. But I know what Errol, excuse me, I know what Errol Spence is going to try to knock me out with. It's not going to be a straight left hand. That's not his game. Spence, of course, is a southpaw. Right? You know that Errol Spence is going to try to take you out with hooks. You understand he's a hooker. You understand he's a pressure fighter. Now let me add. He has an excellent back foot game. He only uses it out of necessity. He has an excellent jab. He can stick and move. Look at the Mikey Garcia fight. But that's vastly different. And I mean vastly different than what Terrence Crawford is doing. Understand, like Roberto Duran, Terrence Crawford will literally fight different fights depending on his opponent. One of Crawford's best punches, <coughs> and it's interesting, is a chopping right hand. The reason it's interesting is Crawford can throw that from a southpaw stance. Right? Crawford's far from perfect. Neither of these guys is perfect. But with Crawford, like with the New England Patriots, right? like with Duran, you don't know what you're going to get. Both of these guys are slow starters. I'm positive right now. 
that Crawford is going to have a better idea on what Errol Spence is doing at the beginning of the fight than Errol Spence is going to have of what Crawford is doing. Let me also say, too, and it's a demeanor thing. You know, we think of Ray Leonard, and we don't realize that Ray Leonard was actually a knockout puncher. Now, here you have a dazzling talent, and, he, and it's dazzling. And he deliberately dumbs it down, right? Calls himself Bud, has facial expressions where he tries to not look excited, right? You see Bud Crawford after the fight, and you're thinking, wow, did Bud win this fight? Then you have to hit rewind to kind of like see that, yes, Bud just won. <clears throat> you can't tell from his facial expression. So I believe people have started to overlook the fact that Bud Crawford is one of boxing's premier closers. Right? The same way, you know, you can look at an Anthony Joshua and you understand, oh my goodness, this guy ends fights. Right? That's the way you have to look at Bud Crawford. The fact that Bud doesn't look like Anthony Joshua. Muscles all over the place and stuff like that. The fact that Bud's actually a refined boxer should not diminish his efficacy in knocking people out. So, let's go through some fights. Let me also point out, too, that I have many of these fights, or at least the highlights to these fights, in my favorites folder here on YouTube so you can for yourself. Look at what I'm talking about. Now, I believe between these two fighters, there is a huge gap in two areas, right? Defensively, Errol Spence, in my opinion, even with Derek James, great trainer, is not close to Bud Crawford. Right? Crawford is special defensively. Right? Don't get me wrong. He's been hit hard in fights. He's been dropped in at least one fight. But Crawford makes adjustments. Crawford is hard to hit. Guys with faster hand speed than Crawford. No, they can't push the issue. Crawford, slow starter, <clears throat> has faster guys pacing themselves. The pocket's not there to be jumped into. They understand they're up against a guy with very good counterpunching skills and an excellent defensive construct. I don't believe that's the case with Errol Spence. Let me also say, too, in terms of the variety of punches, yes, Spence has an uppercut. Yes, Spence has a jab. Yes, Spence can throw a straight um, left hand, right? He can't put it together <coughs> like Terrence Crawford. In other words, the public thinks these guys are close. I don't. I like Crawford to win the fight, dare I say, because I believe Spence is bigger and has more to hit, right? Spence has a body that I've looked at film. It looks like it's there to be hit. I don't see a lot of guys going for it, right? I think if Crawford cracks the code, Crawford, really one of boxing's consummate closers, might end this around the eighth or ninth rounds. Let's talk about it. I looked at some Crawford fights. I thought, let me look at Crawford against a guy with a very high ceiling. In other words, I'm not saying the guy pulls off the high ceiling all the time. But what I am saying is this fighter has hand speed Crawford can't match, right? Can take out an overmatched opponent, throws combinations, Right, moves around the ring, has an excellent <coughs> left hook, right, which I think is a factor when you're facing 
a skilled southpaw like Errol Spence. So I was looking at the Amir Khan fight. I understand Khan's skills have diminished. I understand Kell Brook just beat him up. But I thought, let's see him against Crawford. Let's see how Crawford can control this fight. Let's remember, too, Khan lost to Danny Garcia in a fight where he's dominating Danny Garcia early. Right? Khan's a guy who comes in, flashes hand speed. Some guys are overwhelmed. Now, Garcia was able to catch Khan. <coughs> but Khan's a guy who will have his way early in fights. Not against Crawford. Now, let me point out something else. Crawford, who seems better at lefty than he is righty, comes out against fast-handed Amir Khan as a right-handed fighter. You know, you're watching this and you're saying, my God, I mean, isn't, isn't the right-handed stance really Crawford's off stance? Against a fast guy, wouldn't you think, man, you know, you better come out with your top stance because you don't have time to think. But understand, Crawford is so advanced, he's in as a righty against Amir Khan. You notice they're in the middle of the ring. Khan, who was able to bum rush Danny Garcia. Right, Khan, Mr. Hand Speed, who has a hand speed advantage in the first round of this fight, is hesitant to jump in the pocket. <coughs> the fight stays in the middle of the ring. Now, let me uh, just say that you see Crawford sizing him up. You see Crawford crunching the angles in his head. Crawford then drops a very short, chopping right hand. Now understand, he's in a righty stance here. He can drop this counter-chopping right hand when he's in a southpaw stance as well. And it's that chopping right hand up top that knocks Khan down for the first time in the fight. Right? Look at the replays of it. I have the film again in my favorites folder on YouTube. So Crawford lands. Khan goes down. You would think, oh, Crawford must be thinking to himself, oh, let me stay right-handed the whole fight. What more do I need? I'm knocking this guy down early. I'm making my point early. I'm effective. <coughs> Forgive my cough. <laughs> Getting off a bad cold. By the third round, though, because you're dealing with Terrence Crawford, and Crawford really... As I'd like to say, as I used to say about Bernard Hopkins, Crawford really is fighting himself every fight. You need to understand that. Whatever Crawford does, Crawford has the standard he wants to impose. So forget the knockdown as the right-handed guy. By the third round, Crawford's in a left-handed stance. By the fourth round, you notice Crawford is targeting Khan's body. The fifth round, Crawford decides, hell, let me switch stances throughout the round, leaving Khan completely baffled. Now, Andre Ward is on the telecast. Andre Ward's trainer, of course, was the great Virgil Hunter, who currently is training Tony Yoka. Right, the Olympic gold medalist at heavyweight. <coughs> well, Virgil Hunter is in Khan's corner for the fight. So Andre knows Khan's trainer well. And before anything major happens, right, at the end of the fifth round, Andre Ward on camera starts talking about how Virgil Hunter might want to start thinking about throwing in the towel. Well, at the end of the round, they point out that Crawford 
has landed 41 more punches. Folks, we're not even halfway through the fight. 41 more punches than fast-handed Amir Khan. So, of course, we get to the infamous sixth round. Crawford does throw a low blow. The low blow looks like it hits Khan in the leg to me, not, let's say, a more private area. <coughs> Khan goes to his corner. Virgil Hunter asks him several times, do you want to continue? Now, let me just tell you, if Khan were in the fight, the trainer would never think to ask that question. Here, Virgil says, do you want to continue? And Khan doesn't respond. Let me tell you, if you're a fighter who thinks you're in the fight, you would say, hell yeah, I want to continue. Right here, Khan says nothing. The fight ends. Technical knockout. Now, I don't think Errol Spence is going to bring Khan's hand speed into the ring. But he's going to bring that very long upper body he has. And just like Khan, a guy who is hard to hit in the body, <clears throat> fast hands, weird angles, combination punching, just like Khan ends up getting hit in the body. By Terrence Crawford, I'm expecting, I'm expecting Crawford to be able to target Spence's body with several body shots. I'm also expecting the very high efficiency rate. Understand Crawford lands over 45% of his power punches. Now let's criticize Crawford here. The Green Machine fight. I believe this is Crawford's toughest fight. Right now, Crawford starts lefty in this fight. Right, I told you, Crawford's a different guy, depending on who he's facing. Right, he's righty against Amir Khan. Here he starts lefty. Now, Green Machine, who was a two-time Olympian, gets by on power. And you notice that Green Machine has found a way to keep Crawford engaged without letting his hands go. One way to not get countered is to not throw punches. Right now, Errol Spence might want to look at this film. But here's the problem. Right in the second round of this fight, Green Machine lands a picture-perfect straight right hand, right? It's a straight right, remember that. Almost takes off Crawford's head. We get to the next round. Green Machine again lands that same textbook straight right hand. This time, <coughs> he knocks down <laughs> Crawford. Now, the ref misses it. On the replay, it's clear that Crawford is hit so hard, Crawford can't even hold on. Crawford looks like he completely loses where he is for a second, and he ends up on the canvas. It's clear that Green Machine's ability to hide his hands, to be patient, to throw very few shots, and to lead with power shots, has thrown off Terrence Crawford. The problem is, Green Machine's a righty. Errol Spence is a lefty. Spence doesn't have that straight right hand. Right, that's the problem here. There are secrets to this fight. I believe Crawford knows, because this is not the only fight where we had a problem with straight right hands, that he doesn't want to deal with straight right hands. Here, with Spence, he has the opponent who's not going to be able to throw green machine level straight right hands. <coughs> so Crawford, of course, gets off the canvas, gets to work, 
changes up the angles a little bit, starts coming over on Green Machine's left side a little bit more, starts throwing that chopping right hand from a southpaw stance. Right, the same chopping right hand that dropped Amir Khan in the first round, he uses to work over Green Machine. Then he starts mixing in uppercuts. Right, and Crawford is just better at keeping you guessing on where he is and in how he handles his feet. Right, Crawford is so blessed that he's able to just look like he's getting clean shots by accident, <clears throat> when in actuality, <coughs> he's putting his left, his right leg outside the other guy's legs, setting up a tight angle where he can then have a straight path to either a straight left or a right uppercut or a chopping right hand, right? So Crawford, of course, deprives Green Machine of the angles that Green Machine had in the second and third round where he hurts Crawford, right, drops Crawford in the third round. Green Machine doesn't see those angles again the rest of the fight. Now let's talk about Spence. And what I want people to do is to look at the Spence-Danny Garcia fight. I understand Spence had just had a car crash. I understand Spence supporters say this is not prime Spence. <coughs> well, folks, Spence hasn't had that many fights after the car crash. Danny Garcia can't handle Spence's volume. I'll concede that. But Danny's there for 12 rounds, and Danny starts landing sweeping right hands. By that, I mean Danny, who's a mid-range hooker, will tuck his head and then throw a right hand from distance. And it was landing with regularity on Errol Spence. That's a punch Terrence Crawford can throw. Right, Danny goes 12 rounds. Danny doesn't look to be in serious trouble in that fight. Let's talk about Spence's crowning moment. Spence, Chris Algieri. Folks, I want you to look at that film and ask yourself how many straight punches did Spence throw in this fight? In other words, Spence is running up to Chris Algieri, and it's a hook fest. You understand that a good jab would keep Spence from running up to Terrence Crawford. Right? It is a hook fest. It's all hooks. Right, folks? That's a one-off. If he tries that against Terrence Crawford, he's going to find himself getting counterpunched. He's going to see Crawford pivot away and move to the middle of the ring. Force him to be cautious, just like Crawford got Amir Khan to be cautious. You want to see Spence hurt? Let's talk about another post-car crash Spence fight. Spence Ugas. Spence looks dominant in that fight, doesn't he? Right, Ugas underrated. To me, Ugas is a defensive wizard. But the sixth round is part of that fight, isn't it? How come every time everyone discusses the Ugas fight, they overlook the sixth round? In that sixth round, Spence gets hit hard. The first shot isn't enough. Spence gets hit a second time and literally staggers over to the side of the ring. You know why he doesn't fall down? Because of the ropes. He falls into the ropes. Folks, that was a knockdown. You need to be concerned about that. Looks like Spence gets hit around the eyes. Didn't Spence have eye surgery recently? 
Let's talk about a fight <coughs> that gave Crawford problems. Another guy, quick-handed, quick-handed, who's leading with right hands, who can throw a straight right hand, a sneaky right hand, the Kell Brook fight. Now, Kell Brook comes out, and you'd be surprised. Kell Brook starts landing some right hands on Terrence Crawford. They're straight. Right now, knockouts cause amnesia. Crawford wins that fight because Crawford has his own ideas, right? Crawford's throwing punches back. But what I want people to do is to look at Kell Brook's lead rights, look at Kell Brook's rights right down the middle. Understand, Green Machine, same type thing, where Green Machine hides his right hand, then threw it right down the middle. No loop. <coughs> Kell Brook, same thing. Has success on Terrence Crawford who, of course, starts against Brooke as a righty. But understand, again, that Errol Spence can't throw that straight right hand. Right? That's the problem. He can throw a jab, but that's different from the power right hands that Green Machine and Kell Brook throw against him. So, let me just say, what I think happens in this fight is I think there's a learning curve. <coughs> I think the fight starts slow. Right? I, I, don't, I don't see a Chris Algieri situation. Right? Errol Spence has to understand he just can't come in, rely on hooks, think he's going to corner... Terrence Crawford, understand, both Amir Khan and Cal Brook, in my opinion, have the hand speed edge on Terrence Crawford. <coughs> both of these guys understood. They could not crash the pocket early on Crawford because Crawford's defense is too good, right? Guys are looking at him and they say, oh, I see his hands up here. I see his hands over here. How am I going to start throwing my stuff? Right? And Crawford is too skilled a counterpuncher. He counters with power shots. Notably, that chopping, and I think it's going to be a factor against Spence, that chopping right hand. Right? If Danny Garcia's right hand was getting in on Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford's right hand, right? Both Garcia and Crawford. Have timing with that right hand. We'll call it an educated counter right hand. Terrence Crawford's right hand should be able to land. And Crawford, who isn't a mid range hooker like Danny Garcia, moves better than Danny. Right? So I think Crawford <coughs> is going to be ready to box Errol Spence. I think Spence is going to try to make his jab an issue. Crawford, who's smaller, is going to know how to neutralize that jab. You just saw a great fight where Derek Chisora neutralizes Kubrat Pulev's jab for the first seven rounds. Crawford is going to know how to neutralize that jab. This is not the Mikey Garcia fight, where Mikey is too upright and too robotic. Right? Crawford is going to be bouncing. Crawford's going to know how to get under that jab. Then he's going to find that Spence really can't throw a lot of straight punches and that Spence is not defensively blessed. Right? Crawford is going to realize, oh, all I got to do here is look for the hooks. Let me take them away from him with movement toward the middle of the ring. Spence is not going to have that luxury. Right, Crawford also will dampen his volume at times, <coughs> waiting for the perfect counter. That's going to teach Spence, who again went the distance with Sean Porter, went the distance with Danny Garcia. Those are two of his more recent fights. When you get hit with some crisp counters, 
that will teach a guy not to be over-aggressive. So I'm expecting Errol Spence, after looking great against the passive Ugas, I'm expecting Errol Spence to look sluggish against Crawford. Because that's what happens to Crawford opponents. Didn't Amir Khan look sluggish against Crawford? Didn't Cal Brook, who looked great against Amir Khan, look sluggish against Terrence Crawford? <coughs> Didn't Sean Porter, and I'll agree with those who believe Porter was winning that fight at the time of the stoppage. Didn't Sean Porter look sluggish against Crawford? Much more than he looked against Errol Spence, where the Errol Spence fight is rough and tumble. Guys are throwing punches, right? Guys are active. He gets in against Crawford, and it's a chess match. Right? I'm expecting Errol Spence to find himself in a chess match against a guy with better feet, against a guy with a more varied game, against a guy who's a better counterpuncher, against a guy with better defense. And I'm expecting Errol Spence to find out the hard way that Bud is one of the dominant closers in boxing. Right? If you have a sixth round like you had in the spence Ugas fight, I'll be surprised if Spence makes it to the end of the seventh round. <clears throat> I like Bud in the fight, if the odds permit, and they should because this is an evenly matched fight. I'll hedge the play with Spence by stoppage. I do not see, even though Spence beat future Hall of Famer Mikey Garcia by decision, I do not see Spence with an opportunity to win this fight by decision. Bud is just too technical. If the fight goes to a decision, I'm expecting the judges to think to themselves, man, I like Bud's defense. Man, Bud really had it going as a southpaw in that sixth round after the previous round as a righty. <coughs> right? You know, wow, Bud had that uppercut going with both hands. Right? Let's just say, and I know Spence hits hard, I know Spence frames his punches extremely well. He just doesn't have as many of them to frame, in my opinion, as does Bud Crawford. I expect Bud to win. I'll hedge the play with Errol Spence by stoppage. Uh, I might even throw just some experimental money on um, the fight not going the distance in general simply because I believe Bud has a reasonable chance of closing the show here. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are other fights you want to discuss, if there are other dynamics you think we should know about, tell us in the comment section of this video. Let me point out, too. I'm a big believer in Virgil Ortiz, the young up-and-coming fighter. You know, Ortiz ran in a green machine and he got dropped. Right? Understand, we might have the pecking order wrong here. <clears throat> um, Ortiz got off the canvas like Bud, went on to win the fight like Bud did. But, you know, some guys might be underrated in this game. Right? Here's Green Machine facing two of the better guys in the division, in my opinion, Bud to me, the best in the division, and uh, Virgil Ortiz, rising fighter. And here's Green Machine having his moments, right? Just understand, Green Machine might hit as hard as Errol Spence, right? Bud may have already faced a tougher opponent for him since Bud seems to get hit with straight right hands. Right, Danny's facing here against Southpaw Errol Spence, who doesn't have one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I like Bud to win the fight. I'll hedge with Spence by KO. <coughs> I might even throw action on 
fight not going the distance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.